right, all right, all right. It's your boy Jaime here, back at it again with a brand new training. The SMA world is shaking. Gurus left and right asking, when is he gonna stop banging out these free step-by-step -step trainings on his YouTube? And look, I don't even know. It may be very, very soon. But look, for the time being, go ahead and grab yourself a nice drink. Go ahead and grab yourself a healthy snack. Go ahead and grab yourself a pen and paper because uh, this is going to be a very juicy one. In this video, I'm going to be walking you through step by step how to set up your Facebook ads ecosystem so you can run ads for your social media marketing agency clients. Yes, you heard that correctly. I get so many DMs. I get so many messages uh, telling me, dude, Jaime, your trainings on how to sign e-com clients, is, they're, they're incredible. Like they're literally step by step. I'm implementing them. I'm finally seeing results with my agency. My one-to-one -one mentee is scaling to 10, 20K a month, 30K a month with their agency. But how, what do I do when I sign these clients, right? How do I get them onboarded into my ecosystem? How does the whole partnership work? Do I give them my Facebook ads manager? Uh, do I do I become an employee in their Facebook ads manager? How does this whole thing work? And that, my friend, is what I'm going to be answering in this video. So without further ado, we're going to do a little combination of me talking, me jumping on my uh, computer, and me also hopping on this whiteboard behind me. So how to set up Facebook ads for your SMMA in under five minutes five minutes. Yes, this video is longer than five minutes, but a lot of it is understanding the architecture structure. Once you know the architecture, once you know the structure, once you've set it up, it is literally such a frictionless system, so straightforward that you can probably do it in one, two minutes. Okay. So let's get right into it. Now, here is what we're going to cover. First of all, is understanding the architecture, the village analogy on the whiteboard that's going to help you understand the Facebook ads ecosystem so incredibly well. Um, because look, I get it. The Facebook ads ecosystem, the Facebook ads manager, ad campaigns, ad accounts, um, you know, ad sets, it all can be a bit confusing. So once I cover the village analogy, it will probably make a lot more sense. Now, the next thing is setting up your own ecosystem. So your agency's business manager, I'm going to be walking you through a step-by-step -step guide on how to set that up. And then what do we do on the client side of things? What, what does the client have to do to get us onboarded into their own ecosystem? So we can start running their Facebook ads as a social media marketing agency. So that is uh, the third section, gaining access to your client, the partner access and why it's incredibly blissful for agencies and clients. So the first thing that we're going to cover is the architecture. And for this, I'm going to be getting off this chair and going on that whiteboard and showing you guys exactly what the architecture for the Facebook ads manager looks like, the village analogy to understand the whole Facebook ads ecosystem and how you can use it to be in the top 99.99% of social media marketing agencies out there. So let's get into that. All right, here we are on my whiteboard. If you thought I was gonna leave my mic behind, you were wrong. Uh, and I'm gonna explain to you guys the architecture, okay? Because uh, I truly believe that the most important thing you need to understand is honestly the architecture. Once you've understood the architecture and everything becomes so easy, right? It's just about setting the whole thing up, which I'll show you in just a bit. But the first thing you need to understand is we need to create our business manager, okay? I'm gonna wipe this out. Hopefully you guys can see this. Uh, I usually, I'm terrible at getting the lighting right when it comes to the whiteboard, but hope you guys can see that that says business manager. Okay. Now the way I'm going to explain this is using the village analogy. The business manager is your village. Okay. Your village. So this is your village. Okay. I'm going to make that bigger so you guys can even see it bigger. All right. So we've got your village, boom, your empire, you're building an empire. Okay. Now, within the business manager, we can fragment things. Okay. So we've got inside the village, we've got little houses, right? Just like this one, for example, boom. Okay. So for example, when we walk in, we might have, you know, here we have a, a little window, right? And within that window, you can see the living room, right? So we can, we have the living, the living area. Okay. And within the living area, we've got different rooms, right? Maybe we have a within the living area, we've got the dining room, we've got the living room, we've got the um, chilling spot, right? However, you would set your house up. So we've got different areas within a home. And within that uh, area, we've got different rooms, right? For example, we've got the sleeping area, right? And within the sleeping area, we've got different bedrooms. And the, the reason why I'm saying that is because the way we need to imagine it is your home is an ad account. Okay, so this is an ad account, a a now, within an ad account, we can have different campaigns, right? So the home is the ad account, the 
different living areas are the campaigns and the different rooms within each area are the ad sets. Now within each room, you find a bit of furniture and the furniture are the ads themselves. The ones you see on Instagram, the creative, the image, the video, as well as the ad copy, which is the text that accompanies these images and videos. So that is that for the ad account, each home is an ad account. Now within your business manager for your agency, right? So let's just say Mogul C Media, which is my agency, right? Within your business manager, you will have the ability to build okay five different homes now here is the thing you have to spend a bit of money you have to build this home first right to be able to unlock these five different grounds for these five uh, these four uh, extra homes okay that's very important to keep in mind the great thing is we're not actually going to be utilizing our home we're not going to be utilizing our ad account to run ads very very important and the reason why that is is because the clients that you sign are going to have their own business manager. They're going to have their own little village. Hopefully you guys can see this. So for example, we've got business manager. Okay. And this is Nike's business manager. Okay. Nike. Boom. So within their village, within their business manager, they also have the ability to create five different homes. Now they should definitely create five different homes because they've probably spent a bit of money here advertising, right? And it's important to have these different homes just in case one of these homes gets destroyed by Zuckerberg and their team, right? Essentially, just in case your ad account gets banned, okay? So it's very important to have four clients making sure that they have their five ad accounts unlocked. Now here is the thing, okay? When you start running ads, when you wanna run ads for a client, right? They've gone ahead, paid you money and they said, yes, I want you to be my agency. When you start running ads, you're not gonna be running ads from your own ad account for Nike, okay? There's a bunch of reasons why you don't wanna do that. Number one is if you were to go ahead and start running ads for Nike within your ad account, within your home, right? Which is inside your village, you'd be going to bed with 100, 200, 500K in debt every single month, okay? Why? Because you'd have to pay for Nike's ads. Sure, they would maybe reimburse you at the end of the month. Uh, you know, I'm hoping that they would, right? But it's not great for cash flow, okay? That's the first reason. The second reason is if you guys start, decide to part ways, right? If you're running the ads from your own home within your own village, right? And you've got a fort here, right? If you part ways, you actually part ways with all the data, okay? All, everything you've done for them, right? That they've actually paid for because they're putting the money to, for you to be able to run the ads, right? They pay for the ads. Make sense? I've seen this time and time again. I've, I've had massive clients, right? That we've signed. And they told us that their previous agency actually created their Facebook uh, business manager, right? Or their Google ads manager. And they actually run away with it, okay? Maybe not in a bad way or maybe not wanting to do any harm, but essentially because they didn't own, because the client did not own the business manager, they did everything under their agency's ad account. When they parted ways, they kept all the data, right? And it was such a mission to get this data back. Oftentimes we weren't even able to, okay? Which is not great because they've literally spent, you know, hundreds of thousands of, of dollars, even just thousands, right? But, but potentially even millions, okay, on this data and now they don't have access to it. So we don't want to run their ads from our own ad account for those two main reasons. We also don't want to have the keys to their home, right? We also don't want to go into Nike's um, village, right? And go into one of these houses because that would be a nightmare, okay? You'd have to have different keys, different, essentially different usernames, different passwords, different keys for different homes. It would be a, an absolute mess, okay? So the way you do this, okay? The way you do this is you essentially get partner access, okay? And the way I'm going to illustrate this is, the way we need to imagine is one of these houses, right? One of these houses actually goes ahead. Once they give you access, right? They build the ad, the house, okay? Or essentially, they give, once they give you access to the ad account, they build the house within your own village, okay? So now you can access this home, right? Now you can access this home within your own village, which is great, right? Once you log into your business manager, you'll be able to see all the different ad accounts you have access to. Nike, Adidas, Puma, Under Armour, right? That would be a, a successful agency you've got right there, right? But essentially, you've got them under your own village, which is massive. Why? Because now you can add, you know, whoever's added to this business manager, right? So, you know, you, the the, the contractor, right? You can add whoever you want. And I'll, I'll share that with you. I'll show you how to do that in just a, a few minutes. One of the great things about this is also that, um, you know, Facebook, as I told you, limits you to five ad accounts, right? But you can actually have as many partner accesses as you want, right? So you can have, essentially you can have, you can build as many homes within your village as long as they're partner access, right? You cannot have more than five ad accounts, but you can have as many partner accesses as you want. 
the main reason why this is incredibly vital is number one for the client, right? Whatever you do within this home, okay? Whatever you do within their ad account, they will have access to, okay? They will be able to, uh, if you guys part ways, right? They'll just go ahead and take their house and boom, done, right? You don't own the, this house, right? They just loaned you access to the house, which is within your village, but they just loaned you access to it, okay? So they keep all the data. Number two, they still pay for all the electricity, all the bills, that goes on, you know, that goes on within this house, right? So all the ads, everything that you do within this ad account, they actually pay for because their business manager is tied to a payment method, okay? Whether it's PayPal, credit card, bank account, okay? Ideally, credit card or bank account. Make sense? Now, in a nutshell, with the village analogy, that is the bliss of having partner access and that is the way we're gonna structure our business manager and our ecosystem within the Facebook landscape for our agency to recap. We've got our own business manager, which is our village, right? Within this business manager, we can we could actually build up to five different homes, which are five different ad accounts, right? We can only build one because you have to spend money to uh, to actually unlock the other four. Now you're not going to spend money because you're not running ads from your own ad account. Instead, Nike has their own business manager, their own little village, right? They're giving you access to they're giving you partner access to one of their homes, right? One of their ad accounts, and this ad account then becomes part of your village, but it can leave at any point, right? Also, you can add as many of these partner ad accounts as you want within your village, right? And then whatever happens in this home, right? We're doing all the electricity work, we're doing all the work ourselves as the agency, right? We just go ahead, we pop in, you know, every single morning, we just do what we're gonna do, right? But they pay for that, okay? We build it, we scale it, we make sure that we make them a lot of money, okay? We make it as effective as possible, and then they pay for that. So that is, uh, in a nutshell, uh, the, the architecture, and now let's get into uh, how to actually create this thing for your agency and how to get our clients to add us as a partner. So let's get right into it. So now that you've understood the architecture with the village analogy, let's get straight into creating your own ecosystem, setting up your Facebook ads manager, setting it up in a way that screams professionalism from your side and setting it up in a way that is completely frictionless for you and the client. So first things first, I want to answer what is the Facebook business manager? Because I know a lot of you have heard of this word, have uh, seen this word thrown around a bunch in the space, but what is it actually? Right? The way Facebook describes it is as a one-stop shop to manage business tools, business assets, and employee access to these assets. I will show you what they mean by that, but it is separate from the social side of Facebook. It is separate from the personal side of Facebook, and it is a hub for the business activities, which actually leads me to the second point, which is business activities are separate from personal, right? So there's no distractions and only business functions. There's also no personal Facebook uh, information either. You'll see in just a bit that you have to create a Facebook business manager with your personal Facebook account, but if you have employees, if you have clients, they will not be able to access this personal information. It is all kept separate and it is all kept focused around business and making money for your clients and for yourself. And the final thing is, it's a central place to track and manage Facebook ads. Here's where we will launch campaigns, scale campaigns, kill ads. Also, they give you detailed reports that show how ads are performing and much more. For example, this is a look into an ad account within the Facebook ads manager. Um, and you can see here, right? For example, we've got a bunch of different metrics. Um, there's a lot of metrics that you probably don't understand just yet, but the main ones being the, the website purchase conversion value. So we can see here that that is 40,000 pounds. You can also see that the returns on a ads manager, the returns on Facebook ads are clear cut. Unless you're doing local business where you're optimizing for a cost per lead, you're optimizing for leads, which are not customers, but why would you be doing local business in the first place? Um, so that is the website uh, purchase conversion value. Then we also have the website purchase ROAS, return on ad spend, that, that's what uh, ROAS means. And there's also a few other important metrics like the ad spent, amount spent, how much have we spent on the ads. We cannot see it in this example, but this way you get a bit of an idea that we have very detailed reports, meaning we can clearly see how much money we've spent, how much money we've generated for a client, what the return means for them. Um, and here you can also see that this is where we launch the ads, the campaigns, and really how we make our clients money. So... That being said, let's get right into setting up your Facebook business manager account. Now, I'd love to give you a step-by-step -step walkthrough on my end, but I've already created my business manager. So what I've done instead is even better. I've gone ahead and put together a step-by-step -step walkthrough on not on a dummy account, not on my account, an example account that you can use the exact same steps to create your own business manager. So the first thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna go on business.facebook.com, okay? 
go ahead, do that now. You can pause this video, you can do this as you go, or you can take a few notes now and then watch this video later as a refresher, but you're gonna go on business.facebook.com. Now, once you've gone ahead and done that, you're gonna go and create account. You're gonna need your personal profile to confirm identity, but partners will not have access to the personal information. We spoke about this already, but essentially, even if you sign up with your personal account um, and you are uh, a bit worried that they're gonna be able to see your pictures of you, you know, with your friends uh, partying or drinking um, at a club, whatever it is, right? They're not going to be able to see that. You just need to uh, create it with your personal profile to confirm your identity. However, even though they cannot see it, I still recommend you clean up your Facebook profile if you haven't done so already. Uh, especially if you're reaching out to clients, you don't want to reach out uh, to clients and then you know seeing the you know the the the, the Marathon pages you've liked uh, when you were 15 or 16 or some very questionable and dodgy pictures on your Facebook profile. So go ahead and clean that up regardless once you've created your business manager. But that is the first thing that you want to do. Go on business.facebook.com and go ahead and create your business manager. Now, before we get into the next step, if you're enjoying this video and you haven't made that gray looking ugly like button, that one right there, that, that one. If you haven't made it turn blue, then I'd really appreciate if you did that right now. Helps a lot with the algorithm, the whole channel, and I'd really appreciate it. Uh, so with that being said, let's get right into step number two, which is you want to enter your details. Now, here are a few of the uh, the gaps that you need to fill. So first things first is your business and account name. You're going to name it after your agency, for example. Uh, Mogul C Media, right? John Grows Media, right? Uh, Mahad Media, whatever it is, and it doesn't have to have media at the end of it. Whatever you've named your agency, you're going to go ahead and put that right there. Then you're going to put your name. So my name, Jaime Higuera. And then I'm going to put my business email. Now, I recommend before this step, you go ahead and create your G Suite uh, so that you have a business email for your agency. For example, john at johngrowsmedia.com. Okay. So once you've done that, then it's going to prompt you to uh, enter your business details. What you want to do here is ideally you want to use the same address that you signed up to be in an LTD in the US, a limited company, or an LC or sole trader in the UK, or whatever country you are operating in. You want to make sure that once you've settled your corporate structure and you are abiding by the laws, you want to use the uh, address that you put your, um, your business under here. Okay. Very, very important. And then when it asks you uh, for business, you usually want to make sure that you put promote its own goods or services. Do not select provide services to other businesses, although it, it is pretty intuitive that that's what we're doing, right? We're agencies. Do not do that because uh, I'm going to be showing you exactly why that is in just a bit. So once you've entered your business details, you're going to go ahead and you're going to add a Facebook business page. Now, you probably don't have a Facebook business page. Also, this does not mean you have to have an incredible looking business page with incredible content. It's just so that Facebook can connect a Facebook ads manager to a Facebook business page. It's a must for them. Um, and so you're just going to go ahead. You're going to click on add page. And if you haven't created your Facebook page yet, you're going to go ahead and click on create page. Do not uh, click on request access to any page. That is not how we're going to be doing our access to clients. Um, just go ahead, create a page. If you have already created a page, go ahead and add your page. So this is an example that Hootsuite actually gave in their uh, in their guide. And you can see once you type it in, it should come up and you can just go ahead and select it. Now, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to add your Facebook ad account. Again, you probably haven't created uh, an ad account just yet. So most likely you're going to go ahead and create a brand new ad account. Once you've done that, you're going to go ahead and pick uh, an ad account name. I recommend you name it after your agency. Uh, hashtag one, right? Just to remind yourself that that is the number one uh, ad account for your agency. For example, Mogulsi, hashtag one, okay? Now, uh, after you've done that, you're going to go ahead and select a time zone and a currency. And when it asks you this, you're going to go ahead and put, you probably know the answer to this, my business. Do not put another business or client. In the eyes of Facebook, we're technically not providing services for other businesses. We're creating our own business manager. And I'll show you why in just a bit. Then you're going to go ahead and add your Instagram account. Very simple. And you're going to go ahead and also set up your Facebook pixel. Okay. If you haven't set it up, I'll show you exactly how to set it up. If you have set it up, it's just a matter of adding it to your ads manager. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to go on the business settings. Okay. That is a section of the uh, Facebook business manager. Then once you've done that, you're going to go ahead and go on data sources. There's a bunch of data sources available to you. Catalogs, pixels, offline event sets, um, uh, customer conversions, and a bunch of other ones. We are going to click on pixels. And that's going to take you to this. Okay. Now, once it takes you this, to this page, you're going to uh, name your pixel. I will just name it whatever your agency name is, Mogul C Media Pixel. Okay. And then you're going to go ahead and insert your website URL. Then you're going to click continue. 
and then you're going to set up your pixel. Now, I actually recommend you set up the pixel now because, uh, you know, having a pixel is a vital component of any business. If you guys don't know what the Facebook pixel is, it's just a custom line of code on every single website that tracks the visitors that land on that website and the actions that they take. If you've ever been to a website and you've gotten retargeted everywhere, you've seen their ads everywhere uh, from that point onwards, it's not because they're listening to you, although I wouldn't be too surprised if they also did that. Uh, it's not because they're listening to you, it's simply because uh, this pixel has tracked your uh, usage on the website and can actually retarget you based on the interest, the level of interest you've shown on that website. That is what the pixel does. The, uh, the longer you have a pixel on a website, the more seasoned and matured it's going to get. Okay. Now we're not going to be using this pixel to run ads for our agency, at least for the next a year, year and a half, especially if you're just starting out. But as I said, the more, the more data that the pixel uh, collects, the more the data that it gathers, uh, the more seasoned it's going to be and the more it's going to know about your ideal customer, right? And that's going to allow it to find those customers much easier on Facebook, right? So uh, I don't want to get too esoteric, but essentially that is why you want to have a pixel installed. Depending on what um, website creation platform you're using, whether it's Wix, ClickFunnels, Webflow, which is actually a favorite of mine, and I will leave the link to it in the description. You guys can check it out. It is an affiliate link. I'm very transparent about that, but it's not sponsored. I could also make a lot more money recommending other softwares like ClickFunnels, uh, which is actually much more expensive, um, but I just vouch for them and I really like their service. So if you want to check it out, go ahead and check out the link in the description and you're supporting the channel that way. But if, for example, you're using Webflow, it would literally be as simple as going to the Facebook Pixel uh, section that they have and then just adding the Facebook Pixel ID that you've uh, you've been given by Facebook, okay? It's literally as simple as that. Once you paste in that Pixel ID in this little box, it will be added to your uh, website. So very, very simple to do um, and very, very important to do as well. So that is uh, setting up the Facebook Pixel. Now we're going to add people. This is a, a very important step, okay? Now, if you guys have watched any of my previous videos, you probably know that I talk a lot about the importance of having a, an A player within your team that does the service delivery so you can free up your time, act like a founder and CEO, and not only that, but be able to get better results for your clients, which is the most important thing, right? So not only do you have more longevity because you're providing a better service, but also you have time location freedom because you're acting like a CEO and you're investing your time and energy into things that actually move the needle forward, into things that actually generate revenue. I don't want to get into too much depth, but essentially once you've hired your contractor to come in as a team member for your agency, you're going to go ahead and you're going to invite people to join your uh, business manager. And that person is going to be your contractor. You're going to paste their email in that first box that we can see, and you're going to give them employee access. Do not give them admin access because they'll be able to... Um, to edit things like settings, people, accounts, and tools. Do not do that, all right? Just give them employee access for safety, um, but that is that. Now, once you've done that, Facebook is going to ask you what assets you want to assign this person to, right? So you're going to go ahead and you're going to add them to your page, your ad account, um, and we're not going to have any catalogs, so it's just literally the page and the account. We can see here you have two options. You're going to give them admin access, not standard access, admin access, so they can uh, control the ad account settings, finances, and permissions, okay? Um, so that is that. And once you've done that correctly, you've given access to Mogus Media, um, Had Media, whatever name you've given your uh, agency. So that is that for adding your clients and that is that for setting up your Facebook ads manager ecosystem. Sounds and looks pretty simple. Hopefully that was uh, clear to you guys. And now you've set up your Facebook ads manager. You've set up the ads manager for your agency. Now, as I've shown you previously on the whiteboard, that is not where we're going to be running the ads for our clients. We're going to come in as a partner into uh, the client's ecosystem and we're going to be running their ads from the ad account that they've given us access to, which we're also going to be able to access from our own business manager, from our own little village. So um, the next uh, section is adding your clients. How do we actually go ahead and uh, and have our clients? We understand that they have to give us partner access, but how? How exactly can they give us partner access? That is what I'm going to be showing you right now. The first thing that you want to do is you want to go on business settings. Again, business settings, very, very key. Uh, the exact place where we went on data sources and I showed you where we could find the pixel. Same place, right? But instead, you're going to go on users and then under users, you're going to find partners, okay? So here's an example of that. You can see on screen that we've got two options. They can either click on partner to share assets with or partner to request assets from. They're going to pick the false one. They're going to share assets with us, okay? Now, when they click add, what they're going to need is your business manager ID, your partner ID. The way you find this, again, very simple. You go on business settings, you go on business info, which is another section, just like users, right? If you actually scroll down, you'll see business info and then we're going to go on business manager info. And there you will see, I believe, an eight digit number, which is your business manager ID. Because when they click add, okay, they're going to have to put your business manager ID. 
right? I've, uh, that, that is literally my ID right there. I've gone ahead and crossed it out just so that you guys don't use my ID. And then all of a sudden I get a, a bunch of uh, different requests uh, from clients coming my way. Um, that shouldn't be my clients, but essentially you're going to put your partner business ID there so that the invite okay, to manage their assets uh, goes to your business manager and you can actually accept it and become a partner uh, within their business manager. Once you've done that, they should have shared their ad account, their Facebook page, their Facebook pixel, their Instagram account, and their catalog if they're an e-commerce company. Now, those assets are actually held by your agency, right? By the business manager, which is not you, is also not the contractors. Now, you are the admin of your own business manager. And so what you want to do now is you want to sign yourself and your contractor to the assets of your client. It sounds weird, but once you made the separation between the village and you being the owner of the village, but you're not the village, right? You're not walking a, you're not a, a walking village, right? We've got the village and you're the owner of that village and you uh, decide who has access to the village, right? Or who has access to specific homes, you decide that. But if you don't, that home is not going to be occupied, right? So we want to make sure that we occupy our client's home, right? Uh, which is within our village now. And our contractor goes ahead and occupies the client's home as well. So they can actually do work within that home, okay? Um, I'm taking the, the village analogy to, uh, to, uh, to an extreme. But essentially, just like you did when you assigned uh, access to your business manager for the contractor, you're going to do the same thing um, and, and add them to the client's uh, ad accounts, pages, catalogs, and a bunch of other stuff. So you're going to give them access to the Facebook page, the ad account, the Instagram page, the pixel, and the catalog. Um, a few of those are not actually shown here because this is just the previous example. But once you've done that, then it's going to look something like you've given access to Nike Limited, right? That's just an example. Great Photoshop skills from my side. That is that for the step-by-step -step training. Hope you guys enjoyed this. I think we dove straight into a lot of juice. Um, so if you have any questions, go ahead and drop them down below. Also, if you have enjoyed it, go ahead and drop a massive thumbs up on the video. Helps out with the algorithm, the whole channel. And I'd really appreciate it. Finally, if you've enjoyed this training, you're really going to like the training that I've got for you down below in the description. So check that out. And if you haven't subbed to my channel, there's so much content coming out on social media marketing agency, digital marketing, and a bunch of other really cool topics. So go ahead and sub to my channel, hit the little bell icon so you never miss an update. And as always, hope everything's going well in your journey and I will see you in the next one. Peace.